We have seen some fairly large financial institutions in some pretty big trouble as of late, namely in the banking sector. We've seen the largest bank collapses since the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. And many people feel that this is going to get only bigger from here. Who really knows? But nonetheless, uh, there is a ripple effect that is taking place right now. And precious metals are the beneficiary of it at the moment. Uh, its prices have seen a little bit of a, of a wake-up call here. And you know we also have seen it in other areas as well, such as in the crypto space. However, what does this mean? And what other institution is going to be affected by it? Well, it's going to be the COMEX. Now, I'm going to explain how in this video as we explore. Gold and silver. Many of you have been excited to see the prices rise in these metals. Some of us feel like they should even be higher than where they are at right now, especially silver. But nonetheless, there's been an increased demand in both precious metals. And you know what that means? That means that increased demand means longer wait times and higher premiums, no matter what spot price does. You know, this is kind of a little mini example of what happened during the coronavirus pandemic when spot price fell, but premiums went up. But right now, spot price is up and people are still buying. Uh, but the COMEX is one of those institutions that uh, stores precious metals and, and is an exchange, uh, you know, to send it out to, to, to the exchanges um, for deliveries in the futures market. And it is in real trouble. You've heard me report on this in the past about the stocks of the COMEX stocks depleting at a fairly alarming rate. Uh, I'm going to be referencing an article here from Shift Gold that talks about this and what could possibly happen if we see if the COMEX could be in bigger trouble uh, than, than SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, if the run on physical metal accelerates. And uh, that is a real concern because we've seen it happen for two plus year, massive depletion in the COMEX stockpiles inventories and investors have slowly been pulling physical out of the vaults and now that confidence in the banking system has been put to rest people will look to alternate means to store their wealth and get their money out of the financial system the easiest and safest way to do this would be to own actual physical precious metals as people have done so for thousands of years and of course when you buy futures and the like and you buy etfs Typically, that metal is backed up, at least in part, by uh, stockpiles in the LBMA and COMEX. And I have been reporting on this channel how those stockpiles have been depleting at an alarming rate. In fact, some people feel that they could break, that both of them could break. And here in this video, we're going to focus on the COMEX uh, from the Shift Gold article. If you join videos like this where I talk about precious metals, I hope you will consider pressing that thumbs up button then down below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So it's likely that demand for physical metal could increase significantly in the months ahead. The futures market is already showing a massive move in the price of gold, and we saw the actual physical spot price go up to $2,000 recently. Who knows, by the time you see this video, it could be up, up above that again. It's only a matter of time before this moves into the physical market when it does the comex vault run will pick up steam because you know there's an old adage you may have heard it before this axiom um buy low sell high well people tend to sell low and buy high that's the nature of the game because they operate under fear and right now we are in a high fear state and um for me, I'm kind of pausing right now, making any significant purchases. I've already made one purchase that just got confirmed. I wasn't sure if it would be, um, but I'll be getting that in and I'll explain why I did it. But otherwise, I'm kind of taking a step back in a holding pattern because I think there's probably going to be another dip down the road, but who really knows? But nonetheless, the thing is that to be prepared uh, for either scenario and situation, and that's why I believe in dollar cost averaging at the least and intensified uh, smart dollar cost averaging at the most where you buy a little bit more when the price dips and maybe a little bit less or none at all when the price increases 
investors looked at SVB and saw that it was un undercapitalized and people could only get 80 to 90 cents on the dollar. And you know, why is that? Because they put all this money into treasuries and uh, they lost money there. If investors were to do the same due diligence on the COMEX, they would find an even worse fractional reserve system in the metals market. There's a recent discovery uh, by the uh, London Metals Exchange that some of their inventory was stones rather than nickel. Um, uh, that should only serve as another wake-up call that the supply of physical metal is extremely tight. So that's very interesting, and I may, I may branch out and uh, talk a little bit more about that story. I think somebody may have sent that to me. And by the way, this, uh, uh, several members of the community made me aware of this story that I'm talking about now. But uh, that's kind of likened to, you know, the tungsten in the, in the, in the gold bars or just having weight on hand. And, but nonetheless, uh, the physical metal is extremely tight. If everyone rushes for physical at the same time, there won't be nearly enough to satisfy demand at current uh, prices. And by the way, that's only if, peop if, if, the, uh, if they do what's called a load out. Uh, a little bit of research I've done on this and, and you know, I mean, Shift Gold is not talking about this, but whenever you take delivery at the COMEX, that does not necessarily mean that the metal is physically goes into somebody's private vaults. It only does that if there's a loadout option, which is not done very often, by the way, in the COMEX. It's not done. At, and so that's something that's got to be considered here. Now, obviously, if you take metal and you have it set aside and not make it uh, warranted, which I'll explain what that means in a moment, uh, then that kind of acts as sort of the same thing. But, you know, it's very easy if metal is stored at the COMEX to free it up again to make it, uh, to make it registered again, not just eligible or ineligible or what have you. But nonetheless, um, uh, if everybody rushes to physical at the same time, there won't be enough supply to supply at these current, to, to, for the demand at these current prices. Silver has 15 paper ounces per one physical ounce, uh, according to the COMEX vault. We know it's a lot more than that overall in terms of, you know, the holdings of SLV and, and other things. But this is a vault where it's 15 to 1. That's insane, folks. And that is a derivative market where there should be none of that. We can only be months away from seeing a literal break in the COMEX system if we see a massive run on silver um, and we see some of these loadouts happen. Um, and uh, so the analysis that was done on this, I think it's kind of interesting to see what they've done, but uh, they, they've looked at this thing with some of the, some of the uh, stockpiles here, and they give us an idea, you know, that registered essentially is where there's warrants assigned, and they can be used for a COMEX delivery. Um, now, that would seem to be, the, the terminology is a little confusing because to me that means they're eligible for delivery, but it's really that they're registered for delivery. Uh, I don't like the terminology here, but eligible means that the owner has not made it available for delivery. So to me, that means it's ineligible, you know? Um, so it's kind of strange, but maybe it means that it's in the vault, ready to be bought or, or, or put. It's just available. Um, anyways. So gold is now in its 11th straight month of net outflows, seeing 285,000 ounces leave the vault so far in March. The exodus of metal has slowed since last year when some months saw almost 3 million ounces leave the COMEX vaults, and I've reported on that in prior videos. And, um, but it could change quickly and, uh, and may already be changing as the chart, as we, there's, they have some charts that show some of this information, but uh, we see the busiest week of outflows just in a recent last week, uh, given the price of gold finishing, you know, uh, you know, and reaching briefly $2,000 an ounce, the ongoing banking crisis and general fear in the market, it seems likely that demand for physical could be ready to soar. And that could drive larger outflows from COMEX vaults in the near future. And, uh, Pledge gold continues to decline, but similar to the inventory at large, uh, the drop has been slowing. Now for silver, they continue at a small pace, at a strong pace rather, seeing 3.5 million ounces uh, in outflows. Uh, that's a uh, month to the date. Uh, registered is actually seeing inflows for the second month in a row, most likely because inventories of registered had reached 
dangerously low levels, and I've reported on that for both the LBMA and COMEX, dangerously low levels. And they're trying to keep it, and they're trying to shore it up right now. As mentioned previously, the real floor is not actually a zero, but somewhere higher. And this is for optics to keep confidence in the fractional reserve silver trade. And that's really what it is. Let's cut to the chase. You have fractional reserve banking. Well, it's fractional silver stocks and silver trading in the COMEX. It should be outlawed. This should not be allowed in my view. It should be one ounce to one, pa one paper contract to one ounce in my view. Unlike gold, the outflow slowed this week. Uh, the big moves into registered occurred just as the March silver contract started its delivery. If registered silver was not getting close to the bottom, why did the COMEX have to move 7 million ounces of silver into registered category to handle the March delivery volume? The metal was moved specifically to handle that demand, which indicates available silver stocks are getting dangerously low. So that's what they're doing. They're trying to shore it up uh, from essentially collapse. Interestingly, the metal has not flowed back into eligible as it typically does after delivery. Um, that's it. That's because it's not been taken um, into moved into the out to what is known as loadout, as I mentioned earlier. The metal has not flowed back into eligible. The data show that it was none other than JP Morgan taking the majority of the delivery of the 5.2 million ounces. Some of you in this community have made mention that JP Morgan had um, had bought a bunch of, of, of silver. Perhaps JP decided to obtain silver specifically for the purpose of keeping it in register to inflate the numbers. Again, JP Morgan is the custodian of SLV, uh, the um, and that is the, the most popular silver ETF out there, SLV. So uh, that is interesting. Um, and uh, the move increased JP Morgan's total allocation of register from 32% to 41.6%. This, this means almost half of all registered silver now sits in JP Morgan vaults, most likely for optics. And that is in a form of manipulation in my view. And uh, what does that manipulation tell us? That could be one way that they kind of suppress the price. And that kind of thing happening and occurring um, is believable. And I mean, these are, these are you know, statistics that were sourced from somewhere the interpretation of those statistics is certainly obviously uh, up for debate, uh, but I'm kind of with uh, Shift Gold on this. And I know Shift Gold and Peter Schiff tends to be somewhat of an alarmist in, in some cases, but uh, I think that their work on the COMEX um, is pretty viable in my view and, and legitimate. Um, and so over the last month, to summarize, gold saw inventories fall by 2.1%. And since last year, total gold holdings have fallen by 36.8%. They have fallen by 12.4 million ounces. Silver has uh, registered increased 19.3% in the last month. And that is to safeguard them because of the massive, massive uh, outflows and the dangerous low levels that we have seen for uh, silver there at, at the COMEX. Total registered remains below 40 million ounces and still has seen a drop of 55 million ounces over the last year. There it is. I tell you what, kind of interesting times. It's teetering. I believe it's kind of teetering here uh, with what's going on there. Obviously, the the stock of gold has greatly increased in the COMEX since uh, 2020, since the midst of the pandemic. So there is uh, a little bit of a headroom there, obviously, that you have to take into account here. Uh, but they've been falling uh, pretty dramatically. Uh, and, and why did they increase in that, in, during that period of time? Because of the crisis. And uh, we've been in crisis mode ever since. We've not stopped, but yet the inventories are falling. So this is why it is uh, something to consider and why we should be a concern here. Um, uh, silver, uh, kind of much the same, but it's, uh, it's dropped dramatically uh, over the course of time especially when you look at a registered percent of the total, um, uh, that the, you know, it's fallen massively there for silver. So uh, it's interesting, fascinating indeed. I may actually post a link to this uh, article in the description because I only touched the surface of it. And I'll be curious to see what your thoughts are on it. But uh, we could be in big trouble, bigger than SVB Bank in terms of the precious metal space. And you know, I think it's good to have gold and silver as a loadout in your possession to me that's what it's all about to have a beautiful gold and silver in your possession by the way as an addendum to this video 
Um, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. You may remember I did an um, unboxing of this uh, two, 1995 uh, two ounce gold kangaroo. And look at there right in the center, big old, big old, big old spot on the capsule. And uh, I did contact Atmex and they sent me another capsule for it. That's right. So they did come through and uh, they found another actual Perth Mint capsule and uh, for series one and three, so the actual Perth Mint capsule as a replacement. So thank you to Atmex for doing that. And I'm going to actually put it on right now while we're here, just, as, just for fun at the end of this video. And let's see here. There's the capsule. I'm actually kind of surprised they had it because they, uh, you could have gotten one of these from, um, likely would have gotten one of these from a, a, a one ounce Silver Eagle would have fit that as well too because it is 40 millimeters. Very rarely when I take that out, you can see the coin. The coin is in great shape, nice evenly struck. I don't want to get my fingerprints on it. So I'm gonna be very careful with how I do this. You know what? It's on the coin. Dang it. It's on the coin. Well, crap. I thought it was the capsule. It's on the freaking coin. Oh, well. Anyways, that's a disappointment. Well, a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch. And uh, I want to encourage you to please rate, share, and subscribe.